SpaceX is soaring to new heights. In only five days, it completed propellant load tests of not only one, but two Starship Super Heavy rocket prototypes, boosters 9 and 10. The upgraded Super Heavy Starship booster performed flawlessly during its test on the OLM, showcasing remarkably smooth progress. Just look at how full Booster 9's tanks are, though. It's really a great sight. Rarely do we see this much load during cryo testing. Note that this is the first time a vehicle has been loaded onto the launch site since Booster 7's launch. A propellant load test is a crucial step in the development and testing process of the stainless steel rocket. During this test, the rocket's tanks were filled with propellants that it'll use during its flight. The spacecraft is equipped with 33 Raptor version 2 engines, which are fueled by a combination of cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, also known as Methalox. The purpose of the propellant load test is to verify and validate the performance and integrity of the rocket's propellant system. It helps to ensure that the tanks, valves, pumps, and other components involved in the propellant handling process function correctly and can handle the extreme conditions encountered during liftoff and flight. By loading the propellants into the rocket and simulating the conditions of an actual launch, SpaceX can assess various factors, including propellant loading procedure, checking that the propellants can be safely and efficiently loaded into the rocket without any leaks or other issues, pressure and temperature control, ensuring that the propellants remain within the required pressure and temperature ranges throughout the loading process, cryogenic handling, verifying that the rocket structures can withstand the extremely cold temperatures of cryogenic propellants without becoming brittle or compromised, flow and distribution, confirming that the propellants flow through the rocket's systems as expected, reaching the engines at the correct rate and distribution, safety mechanisms, evaluating the effectiveness of safety mechanisms to handle any unexpected situations during the propellant loading process, and overall system performance, assessing the rocket's behavior and technologies under operational conditions and identifying any potential issues that need to be addressed before actual flights. The successful completion of a propellant load test is a significant milestone in the development of a rocket as it indicates that the rocket's propellant systems have been thoroughly tested and are ready for the next phases of testing, which will include static fire tests during which actual engine ignitions take place while the booster remains grounded. What's next for the Booster 9 should be the spin prime and static fire test milestones. The latter will be of great interest as it'll involve the new steel plate water deluge system. SpaceX plans to use B9 to propel Starship SN25 to orbit. B10 serves as a backup if B9 does not pass the pre-flight tests. Having two boosters enables SpaceX to speed up the rocket ship's development. Engineers have built multiple starships and rockets at the Starbase factory that'll all undergo similar testing and flight tests until SpaceX achieves building a space-ready launch vehicle capable of launching cargo and crew to orbit. While there is still work to be done ahead of a flight test, this has been quite an incredible pace for SpaceX to repair and begin testing of the launch mount and a associated systems. However, SpaceX isn't just busy with Starship. In fact, elsewhere, other SpaceX teams completed the launch readiness review for the Falcon Heavy launch today. Approximately eight minutes after launch, Falcon Heavy's side boosters will return to Earth and land on landing zones 1 and 2 SpaceX shared on X. This mission carries the 9,200 kilogram Jupiter 3 Ultra High Density Satellite, or UHDS, on behalf of Echostar Corporation. Built by Maxar and set to be redesignated Echostar 24 when in orbit, the giant satellite will showcase miniaturized electronics, solid state amplifiers, and a high efficiency antenna architecture for more concentrated capacity over high use areas. The satellite, whose high efficiency KA band antennas, will enable data throughput rates of up to 500 
100 gigabits per second, departed Maxar's facility in Palo Alto, California late last month, and arrived at the Cape on the final day of June. This mission will make 2023 the first year on record to see as many as three Falcon Heavies head uphill. Following the triple-barreled booster's inaugural outing back in February of 2018, it achieved its first two-flight year with a pair of launches in April and June of 2019. A three-year downtime then ensued before the vehicle returned to operational service last fall, and so far in 2023, it has lifted the highly classified USS F-67 for the U.S. Space Force and the powerful Viasat-3 Europe, Middle East, and Africa, or EMEA, Geostationary Communications Satellites for Viasat Incorporated. Two more Falcon Heavies are slated to fly in October. The first targeting launch early that month with NASA's Psyche spacecraft on a journey to explore the metal-rich asteroid of the same name. Originally scheduled for June, the Psyche launch was pushed back to October following the late delivery of the spacecraft's flight software and testing equipment. The second will lift the Space Force's classified USS F-52 to orbit, which reportedly weighs in the region of 6,350 kilograms. Contracts worth $130 million for its launch were awarded to SpaceX in June of 2018, with early expectations that the mission might fly as soon as September of 2020. However, a change in requirements was announced by the Department of Defense in August of 2021, in which the USS F-52 contract was adjusted to $149.2 million, and launch correspondingly slipped, firstly to the second half of 2022, and eventually into the early fall of 2023. We're all looking forward to the next Falcon Heavy flight. Moving along though, did you notice when I said SpaceX shared on X? That's right, Twitter is now called X. The internet is a buzz as the app formerly known as Twitter announced a name change over the weekend. X.com now redirects to Twitter.com, although the social media platform still invites users to tweet. Has anyone else noticed that Elon Musk has long been enamored with the letter X? The letter X has been on just about everything Musk has touched for the last two plus decades. X.com was the original name for PayPal, it's in the SpaceX company name, it's in the name for the Tesla SUV, it anchors X.ai, and his son, X-A-12, and he has said he wants to turn Twitter into X, the everything app. Now he's finally doing something with the X.com domain he bought back from PayPal in 2017. Musk's vision for X is something akin to China's WeChat, a super app that people can use for entertainment and buying goods and services online in addition to posting updates and messaging their friends. Musk further stated that his reasoning for changing the symbol was to embody the imperfections in us all that make us unique. He also posted a photo of himself making an X symbol with crossed arms in front of a poster for the Tesla Model X car, with the caption, Not sure what subtle clues gave it away, but I like the letter X. But back in space news, the head of Russia's space agency has recently extended an offer to Moscow's partners in the BRICS group, which is comprised of Brazil, India, China, and South Africa, to participate in the construction of a joint module for its planned orbital space station, state media reported on Monday. Construction of the planned space station follows Moscow's decision last year to end its decades-long partnership with NASA and withdraw from the aging International Space Station, which is one of the last remaining channels of cooperation between Russia and the United States. The first stage of the planned space station, known as the Russian Orbital System, or ROS, is expected to be launched in 2000. 27, with another four modules dispatched to orbit between 2028 and 2030. The program's leading designer, Vladimir Kachevnikov, told Russian state media in February. The space agency chief was also reported as saying he had offered African nations an opportunity to create their own modules and that Russia was open for cooperation with other countries. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.